Across plains and over mountains, there are stories to be found. Through forests and within caves, secrets lie abound. I've traveled to many places in my time, talking to many people who have stories, and nearly everyone does. But the stories that intrigue me, the ones that pull me in, the ones that take over my brain space, well, those ones aren't talked about. But there are hints, pockets of information ripe for the grabbing by someone dedicated enough to find them and put them together to look beyond the veil to find the truth. So, if you've ever looked in the dark, wondering what could be lurking beyond your vision in the shadows, or perhaps you've heard of some unfortunate circumstances and all you ever wanted to know was what happened, or perhaps a legend has taken your fancy and pulled you in, but all of the information available to you never quite added up. If those questions burn you, you've come to the right place. Welcome to Mystics, Mysteries, and Magics, a show where I, your host, Steve Steverson, answer all of the questions to everything we don't know yet. And today is no different. Today, I travel to the land of wind. A magical place full of many legends and mysteries itself, but today, I'd like to focus on just one of them. They go by the name, the Sea Skipper Captain. This is the first time we were talking about the Land of Wind on this show. Let me explain a few things about this place. Nothing too in-depth just yet, as it's not super important to today's subject, but it will help put several things into context. The Land of Wind is a beautiful place, full of not only many biomes and climates, but wonderful cityscapes and wondrous architecture. The city of Troms and the dwarven town of Thanos are a few of my personal favorites. But to fully experience the wonder that is a Wynn travel manual would be incomplete without mentioning several hubs of trade such as Detlis on the continent of Wynn and Symphris in the villager homeland of Gabal. 
Besides the two big continents that cover both the north and the south, the land of Corcus is a mechanical haven with a wondrous electromagic not seen on either of the other continents. In between these lands are many islands pocketed throughout the ocean, all beautiful in their own way, hiding more stories than you might imagine, but ones we'll have to come back to later. But don't let the beautiful landscapes of this world distract you too much on your travels, if you should visit, as the lands have a dark energy. Between zombies that roam brainlessly, orcs who band together to make war camps, and magical beings such as dragons who protect their own territory, there's plenty of creatures and dangers to look out for. From every continent and island in between the three big lands, there's plenty I would love to cover today, but that would require a bit of travel to every land and every place. Travel that you can't quite do on your own. Luckily, these lands have quite the robust travel system, what I'm quite jealous of, to be honest. Not only can you take luxury airships to travel through the sky in style, but the horses of these lands are a hardy and sturdy breed that even the wind military use. There's also plenty of magical means of transportation such as scrolls, which you can purchase from vendors in most towns, to teleport where you'd like to go, or, if you're feeling up to it, you can get juggled from one town to the next. Your choices and options are both varied and open. In fact, there is another way to get across the ocean. Boats, like the Corkian ship that really only takes you to Corcus, but there's another ship that many adventurers are quite familiar with. The Sea Skipper. The Sea Skipper is a small vessel, but one with so much story and personality thrown into it that it could be the subject of today's episode by itself. But I have a feeling the ship's captain is even more interesting. The captain of this ship, who I shall refer to throughout this piece as the captain or the Sea Skipper captain, is quite an interesting person. Someone that many have interacted with on a daily basis and uses the service of to travel to the many islands and lands, but seemingly few know much about, at least on a personal level. Today, I'd just like to introduce the idea of the captain to you, an idea that I will be digging deeper and deeper into and looking further beyond the veil over the course of this short series. So I hope you'll follow me into this rabbit hole, and maybe, just maybe, we can find the secrets that have either been lost to time or just have never been found at all, and find both the information that we want to know and the information that we don't really want to learn about. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's start at the beginning. For my preliminary research, this is everything I know for a fact. The captain appeared several years ago from now, or more accurately, popped into existence several years ago. Before the first sighting, there was no mention of them. There was no hint that they were around. There was nothing until the first day, where boat passes were sold to passengers and they were taken to where the tickets said. From my understanding, that system is a little outdated now. Instead of a pass, you just tell the captain where you want to go. It's pretty simple. According to my sources, the captain also received their boat from their late father. Apparently, the captain's older brother got everything in the will, except the boat. So they took up the seafaring business. And from my calculations on how many emeralds, the currency of this land, they make a day, it seems to have worked out pretty well. The captain can be spotted in many towns and islands, offering their travel services to anyone with the emeralds. You can find them on nearly every island between the two big continents, as well as the towns and cities of Numrak, Levigar, and Nasak. The town that many first meet the captain in is the town of Nemrakt. Not to be confused with its derelict destroyed twin ancient Nemrakt, this town isn't famous for much. A glorified dock town still recovering from a traumatic past that it could never fully move on from. There's not a whole lot here. Except for their whiskey, and their status as a trading town. A lot of shipments on their way to Deadless will stop here first. But I'm more focused on the whiskey, as the captain seems to have a particular interest with it. Obviously, being a port town means many a sailor would stop here for refreshments. I think the captain goes a bit further and is just a big fan. I've seen them frequent the place quite a bit in my short time here so far. I'd love to go on and on about what I know so far, but 
That's it. I can't find anything else that I can put concretely down about the captain. But luckily, I don't have to. The captain is quite the social butterfly, especially after a few drinks of whiskey, from what I hear from my sources. But that is the only way I will find more information about this captain. Information that I really had no way of ever finding out completely on my own. Would you care to introduce yourself to the audience today? I'm a longtime resident of Gabble. I like pudding, and I used to want to be an airship captain. How well do you know the Sea Skipper Captain? I have known the captain for several years now. My first interaction actually came about a few years ago when I was looking for a fast, easy transportation across the ocean, and I just happened upon him near the town of Nasak. Well, I've known the captain since they arrived in our humble lands. I am a long-term resident of Wynn. What did you think about the captain the first time you met him? I wasn't quite sure what I thought, but all I knew was that I was quite uneasy. Unfortunately, this will have to be a multi-part series into my investigation of the Sea Skipper Captain. I hope today has given you some information on anything to think about, anything to chew on, anything to really grind your gears with. As this is what this show is all about. It's to get you to think. It's to get you look beyond. It's to get you to wonder what truly lives out there among us or around us. So I hope you will stick with me as we look beyond the veil, behind the curtain, and we dig deeper for the truth. As always, everyone, Stay curious. Look beyond the shadows. Don't let the fear of the unknown stop you from learning. I'll see you next time.